What's going on guys? Sin for the win here. We are back with our franchise mode as the Ottawa Senators and a bit of good news here. Colorado didn't get the first overall pick, but they got the second overall pick with our own pick. So good for them. Uh, Detroit looking like they're going to land Jack Hughes. So that's cool. We're going to see Jack Hughes on a team. I don't think he's ever been in before on any of these uh, uh, franchise modes. But Colorado in that top five will usually want to give up their pick because they are more of a competitive team. I think they're going to be the only one in there who wants to give up that pick. So we'll see if there's something we want to move for at that second overall. I wasn't going to trade for it if it was the first overall. We had Jack Hughes in New York, so I didn't want to grab him again. We've had him. Uh, but we'll see. Uh, there's, I'm not even going to guarantee that we'll trade up for that. Anyway, it's going to be a lot of value. And, uh, <laughs> well, we're, we're, we're kind of short on value right now. So... It's going to be a center two-way forward, Quentin Worrell. And he's not too bad. Yeah, good point production guy. What, 71 points in uh, 64 games. 200-foot game, puck protection, pro release. Similar to Couturier. Yeah, he's uh, definitely seems like a more of a... Like a two-way center type guy. Might be decent to build around, but... I don't know if he's worth going for all that value. If it feels like a tremendous center playmaker, I might consider it. Uh, I still might consider it. He's really good. He's going to be very strong overall. All A's and A minuses in his stats, which is, well, really good. So I'm still considering that. I mean, he's a very good all around player. But let's see. Let's see who we're going to pin here and keep our eyes on in this draft. There's also defenseman here. This Broberg guy, I know I was, uh, yeah, never mind, not, not with the injury prone thing. Uh, Capo Caco, I've actually never had. Winger, playmaker, injury prone. Okay, never mind. <laughs> Don't think I'm going to grab either of those then. All right, but we'll get, we'll pin him. Going to want to pin that goalie, also listed as a gem. That's very good for us. Um,. Josh Williams, probably not elite because it's a real person, so maybe no use in pinning him. All right, a couple gems here. I might pin him just to pin him as they are listed as gems. This guy doesn't seem real. Leadership, but weak offensive consistency, weak puck skills, weak. He's just weak, and he's looking like a two-way defenseman, so you don't necessarily want him to be weak in those categories. I'll pin him just because he's a gem, and I don't know how many guys we're going to have pinned. All right, pin him, pin him. A couple of these guys are maybes, and they're low, so they're actually likely to be elites. And I don't recognize their uh, names by any in any way. That guy might be injury-prone as well. A lot of injury-prone dudes here. Okay, all right, we have a lot of top sixes scouted. We'll pin all of them. Just because I want to be able to keep an eye on them. At least have them pop up and be able to kind of look at what they bring to the table. But that's looking like about it. Those are our pins right now. So we're about ready to get into this draft here. Let's check out the retirements. There's usually not a whole lot in the first year. It's usually the same kind of guys. Zetterberg, Camilleri. Oh, Chara, actually. Okay, so Chara doesn't usually retire first year. He usually hangs around for a bit, but this time he decides to call it quits. Fantastic career for the big man. I mean, he is 42. But yeah, at 85, I'm like, he could play more. But this time, decides not to. Yeah, pretty much. He's like the only one out of the ordinary who retires right now. Everyone else is either nothing or... And yeah, no goalies. Okay, so Hendricks, Camilleri, and Brooks Orpik all become scouts. Matt Hendricks. <laughs> okay, so before we get into the draft, let's check out the awards here. And if uh, if you don't know the setup here, if you're a bit more new to these uh, videos, I will be announcing the winners for the uh, point challenge uh, in the next episode. Uh, before all the free agency stuff. That way... You, I, I announced the winners in that episode, and then later in that episode, when you see the lines, you make your predictions again. I feel it just more efficient to keep all that kind of stuff within the same video. So uh, that's that's the uh, format that we go with here. All right, so Stanley Cup Championship, or the Stanley Cup itself, <laughs> went to Tampa Bay. That's actually cool. 
Um, uh, they got the presidents as well. Oh, of course. <laughs> they made it to the cup finals and lost. Oh, no. no please don't, don't let this be a preview to this year. No, no, no. If you're going to make it, you got to win it, man. Uh, Art Ross went to Tavares. Uh, Vasilevsky got the heart. Wow. Wow. He's going to get a lot of hardware. The heart memorial. Uh, Subban. Subban got the Norris. Yeah. Figured it wouldn't be any of the top two guys. Uh, Lady Bing went to McKinnon. Pedersen with the Calder. Con Smythe of Vasilevsky. He's going to take. Yeah. Vesna and the William M. Jenkins. That's four trophies for a goalie. That is. You never see that, really. Uh, Bill Masterton went to <laughs> Seabrook. Uh, the Selkie. Yeah. Went to Bergeron. They friggin' love that plus minus in face off percentage. Uh, and Ted Lindsay went to uh, Vasilevsky. And Maurice Richard to Ovi for the last five years. All right, there we go. There's the awards, and we are ready to get into the draft. We got our 12 picks. We got what it takes to get what we need here. Start this uh, franchise off on the right foot. So the main thing is... Let's see if any of these guys, if we want to trade up for any anything. I just want to see who's willing to give up their pick. I don't think Florida will be. Nope. Basically, it should just be Colorado wanting to give up that pick. Because they usually do when they have that pick. Yeah, they want to give it up. They're a contending team. They don't mind giving that up. So, But like, what, what would we even have that they would need or want? That's the tricky part. Yeah, neither of those guys are heading out. I'm keeping Colin White. Pretty much all these guys that they want, I would hold on to. Maybe Tierney, since we will be picking up another center. Maybe Tierney's a guy who could head out. Because aside from him, we have, you know, White, Batherson, Norris, <laughs> Brown. This guy, Schlappik, Schlappik, Schlappik. I don't know. Uh, so yeah, we could put tyranny in there, but like, dude, how much value? Like, we'd have to give up our own first. It's a lot. The guy's looking good, but still, they don't want that pick. It's not enough value. We would literally have to give up, like, Kachuk or Shabbat, pretty much, and I'm not a huge fan of doing that. Oh yeah, and it was reminded, yeah, they, they actually did lottery protect their pick, but it was a Kachuk pick and not the, uh, <laughs> not the next one. Oh, uh, still, bad foresight. Um, yeah, I don't think we could even trade for this. It's pretty difficult. Like, we'd have to throw in this Gustafson guy, which wouldn't be the biggest deal since we will be picking up an elite goaltender, but we'd have to do that. That, we'd have to take back a goalie because they have too many, and we'd have to throw in the 26th pick. And that's still not enough. That's a lot to give up for a player. I'd have to probably give up two picks. And where we're lining up here, I got some time to decide this, but not too much. But as of right now, I'm not going to make any hasty decisions to pick this guy up. He looks good. But we could also get some top picks with uh, our own. But the way we're having it now, the way our picks are set up, we can grab a lot of these guys. This dude. We can grab... That guy, if we want to, probably grab him. Maybe him, but he's. I'm not as. Uh, he's looking more like a medium top four because he's got the medium. It's not guaranteed elite. Yes, he is a gem, but I don't think he'll be an elite. Uh, but yeah, with the way our pixel lineup, we have our choice of all these guys here, essentially. Can't get this guy, unfortunately, because we have the 26. So, I mean, I would use that to move up. That would be the only one I'd want to use to move up, though. Because I got to hurry here. I... We do have all those seconds, which is nice. And that will help us gain all those dudes. Anyone we want. I could do some, like, shifting, like, moving back, gaining more value, but I just don't have the time for that. If we're going to do it, we got to make that decision immediately. So I'll try for it with one thing, but if it's not really going to work out, and if we run out of time, then we run out of time. That's the way it goes here. Uh, it's just, yeah, the 26 is not as much value as some of these. So that, I might be able to pick up a second, but it's, it's going to be a lot. 
I'd have to take back a goalie if I throw in Gustafson, which is tough. No, no, no. My finger's going too fast. I'm already trying to get to the center thing to put Tierney in there. Yeah, we'd still have to take back some kind of goalie. He's got to be signed and have no value. Well, there we go. Okay, it's close. We gotta hurry. It might have to be some other pick. I don't want it to be. Or another center prospect. Who's the least likely to get here? Or we could do Zach Smith. <laughs> yeah, we don't really have anything else. Zach Smith still has a bit of value, actually. And he's on a pretty shit contract. We could spend a lot in other areas. Or this guy. You know, this guy's probably the guy I can give up. How's he built? Hold on. I got it. I have to before I just throw him in. Yes, 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 yes. Wait, how's that offense? Yep, he's in there. All right, that guy. Ah, oh, too many fucking players. Ah! Who's trash? Give me trash. Don't pick, don't pick. If I'm going to get this, I'm going to get it. All right, I don't know if this goes through, but we're trying. It did. Okay, we were able to squeeze that in. And that's not a horrible amount to give up for what this is. I didn't... We did have to give up, yeah, top six guy, but he he's wasn't as well built as our others. So I like that. Giving up Tierney does suck. He could play this year. But we can grab some uh, trash guys in free agency to play. So Jack Hughes goes. We're able to secure the second overall, trading away a starting goaltender, Gustafson, who's, who's looking like he would be pretty good. But we're able to get Quentin Worrell. And he's got no weaknesses. He's at least going to be a solid two-way center for us. If he doesn't hit our, if he's not our carrying our first line, I think he could easily be a good second liner and penalty killer. And if we did that, even if he's listed as first line, he should not hit morale uh, minuses because he will be penalty kill and uh, probably a bit of power play time in there. If he's not, you know, the first line center we need, he could be the uh, guy who exploits matchups on that second line. So I still feel like this is a good move overall. And, uh, you know, Colorado got some stuff they needed. A goalie of the future, two, uh, uh, you know, a center for now, another center who will be ready very soon. Yeah. I I like it, and I'm, I'm liking this guy. We'll see. The pro release, it could be that this guy's a good shot taker and a good maybe goal scorer, which we do uh, need some more guys who take shots. And I, I do like that he uh, is a two-way guy. So let's see what this guy turns out to be. Quentin Worrell. Second overall pick here. Uh, 77 overall. Not as good as I thought he was going to be. Boy, his stats were uh, made. But hey, 77 overall. He might be NHL ready for fourth line. Yeah, actually not as good as I thought he would be. I thought he'd be closer to 80 overall and maybe even 80 overall. But hey, still a solid pickup. All right, so let's see what's in the rest of that top five here. Uh, so, oh, 65. That's that high top six. Yeah. Well, uh, uh, Edmonton. Not the best pick. Capo Caco, 78 overall. Right wing playmaker. And uh, Kostitsin. Actually, both of those guys were technically better than who we picked up. I got fooled by those grades. I, I guess I should have compared them to them, but I don't know if we would have seen much of a difference because they're so close in overall. But still, I think a good center who can also play wing. I can move this guy to wing. He's got some, yeah. He's going to have that sort of uh, capability to move from center to wing, too. Defenseman wasn't as needed, especially left-handed one. We do have Shabbat. Yes, we do need some defensive prospects, but I'd rather start off with a guy, a center, who you can build around. A first-line center. We don't have one of those. But we do have a top two defenseman, and we do have a top winger in Brady Kachuk. So, this was technically our, mo our better need, but it does kind of suck seeing those overalls a bit better than ours. Just, just, just cause. Alright. So, our next pick will be the 32, which is the first pick of the, uh, of the second round. Which we could pretty much get anything that we want. I just want to see what that top 10 is going to look like, how, how far it drops off. Because there was, yeah, Bo Byram, there was a couple other elites in there. 76 elite, 76 top 6, so Edmonton. Well, they got a high top six. He's not even close to NHL ready. 
Wow, an elite 71. Not bad at all. And then top six, Kirby Doc, but he's 76 overall. Very strong top 10, as usually is. Everyone's in the 70s besides that high top six. Still 70 overall. Suzuki, 73 overall. Dang. There we go. 69, nice, but it looks like that's the drop-off. All right, so there's the drop-off. All right, let's sim up to our pick here in the second round. I do want to check out how the rest of that first went, though. Very curious to how. Yeah, I want to see if it stays in top six, top four range the entire time. Because sometimes it does here in this first year. Uh, nope, one top six defenseman. But everyone else. Everyone else very solid. Okay. So here we are with the 32nd pick. There's a top four defenseman. I'd rather look at for elites, though. Even if I, even if I pick off the board, I think it's a lot better to go for elites. At least potential elites. So Kulikov, lack size, but good work ethic, good shot blocking. Might be weak on defensive consistency, but he's a sniper. Looks like he's going to have some decent defensives. Well, maybe not. He's a little bit, looks like a little bit weird, but good shot blocking, stick checking. But if he's weak defensive uh, consistency, maybe that means weak awareness. And it doesn't say anything about his shooting, but still, it's an elite to sort of have. And we're going to be able to grab a couple more with all these picks. These are all going to be sort of off-the-board picks. This guy's a lefty, unfortunately. I was hoping for an off offensive guy. But I like him. Offensive instincts and defensive zone play. Loyalty concern. Eh. That does suck, but I like that he has an incredible drive to win. That'll help down the road. Yeah, I think we should take a chance on Kulikov here. Even though it looks like he may be built a little weird. It's still very high potential that he's a low elite. It's, I, I think it's almost guaranteed that this guy's going to be a low elite. So I'm going to grab him. Yes, indeed. Low elite, 62 overall. That's a solid pickup right there. 10 picks ahead of where he's projected, but we didn't have anything else in that range. Might as well use those picks right now. Grab everything we can. So there we go. And if he is a shot taker, that just helps us because we need more shot takers, especially on the wing. We have plenty of centers. All right, next pick. Be able to secure ourselves another one. Two top six defensemen went. But we, we got the insider trading info. Our scouts went ham. They got everything. Could grab this guy if I really want to. It's a right-handed dude. Yeah, injury prone. Nope. <laughs> Avoid those guys at all costs. Even though injuries are set to low, you know, it's they still happen. And there's years where it happens a lot. And if you don't have that depth to combat it, it is tough. So... What's the next highest ranked guy that we have? It's this guy. It's another center, though. Nikonen. Injury prone, no thanks. So he's out of the question. He is good on face-offs and has offensive and leadership ability. Everything is good in his strengths. But that injury prone sucks. Like, that's the worst. Potential to be a true leader in any organization. Well, not if he's up in the press box, EA. A lot of centers. Foot speed, agility, and face-offs is good. Incredibly loyal and is very even keel. That's a good pick up there. And he is good on face-offs. We can change some of our center prospects. Uh, excuse me, center prospects to wingers. If they don't look like they're panning out here. But we got to pick and choose. You know what? Hold on. Let me just check how many picks we have within that range of like all the... Uh, in, into the 50s because... Yeah, we only have two more, basically, in that range, so we got to be careful. The next one's at 87, which that will probably be used to get that goaltender, who I believe was listed around 90. We can double-check that right now. Uh, no, that was that guy. The goaltender, okay, he's even after that. But this guy, we can, binaural, all, we can grab with that 87. This guy, maybe with the next one, if it's not too high. Well, well I won't worry about that right now, but we got two more picks here. So, I... Honestly, I might go for the double elite here. This guy does have weak teammate utilization, yes, but that might just mean lower passing, as long as his offensive awareness is good. That guy might be injury prone, so I might want to hold off on that, but Odell is someone I definitely want to grab. So Odell and one more. So who's, who's the next guy I want? Probably, ooh, offense's own instincts, defense's own play, playmaking ability, no weaknesses. 
That's a really good player right there. That's very good. Better than Guru, even though he is good at face-offs. We do have plenty of centers. And odds are a few of them are going to be good enough at face-offs. There's also this guy. That guy was the injury-prone dude. So Odell's good. Not Winkler. All right, so I think we're going to go with Low and Odell here for these. I think that's our... That should be our picks. Yeah, let's grab that. Low is just really solid. Yeah, we got 24 seconds. So let's grab Low here. I like him. No weaknesses is huge. And, you know, no negative personality traits. No real positive ones, but that's okay. 63 overall, center, two-way forward. Gonna have a lot of different two-way forwards. But this guy looking... I mean, he might actually make top six, but if he was only third-line center, I wouldn't mind because he's got great... He's got great everything to be a third line center. Good face-offs, good defensive zone play. Also has good offensive zone play. So if we, we could have a hybrid third line scoring and defensive line, which is pretty much best case scenario. You want depth scoring. Having a first line who, you know, gets 100, 100 points a year, each player is fun. But to win those cups, having that good depth is, is the key. So there we go. Grabbed that. And our, this is our next pick. It'll be the last one here, and we'll be able to grab Odell. So let's find him. There he is, Odell. It's another lefty defenseman, but there's no guarantee he becomes top two. Like, no guarantee he even becomes top four. But that'd be nice if he became top four. Yeah, offensive instincts are good. Defensive zone play is good. Loyalty being a concern is a bit of an issue, but he takes winning seriously and has a drive to win. Those are the guys you want. You want guys who want to win. They, yeah. I think that's enough of positives for me to make this pick. That guy has too many negatives. Well, he does have leadership, and that's nice. This guy is, look, he's not guaranteed he's injury prone. That could be wrong, but his strengths... Those aren't really amazing strengths. Mobility, foot speed, balance, like those aren't incredible strengths. You know, possibly being good in the locker room is is nice, but I still prefer Odell. We have more we have more of a book on him. Pretty much we have a book on him. Yeah. So I think Odell's the guy to go for. And I don't even think Winkler is a no, Winkler's not even a righty. Like that's not even gonna pull me in that direction. So let's grab Odell. Guaranteed low elite, those guaranteed everything. This is the guy we want, Gregory Odell. 63 overall, low elite. So we got all these guys at like 60, mid, you know, mid-low 60s. And either low elite or medium top six. Very successful second round right there. Very successful. And so now our next pick should bring us right up to 87. And we'll be able to grab uh, the next guy who I forgot, but... Give me a break. I was just picking three different dudes there. Uh, yeah, Biner all, and then again, low we want. And then also this guy, but <laughs> two elite grinders. This guy mainly just for value. He might turn out to be something, but probably not. He's got no offensive consistency. The only thing good is work ethic maturity. This guy seems like a, uh, a, a trade asset, basically. But it's a lot of value. So that's why we want him. Now, 117 is our next pick. I got to make sure that we have something in that range. Because that we need that goalie. We just traded Gustafson. We're, we need we actually like we literally need him. What am I doing? Draft picks here. Uh, we got the 87 and the 91. Then we also have the 104, and he was at 117. Yeah, we can grab him with this pick. We can grab another. We can do a blind pick here. Perf. But let's not w waste the blind pick on the 87. The other guy, I'm pretty sure, is ranked to go 91, and they can go early, especially those elites. They will go a few picks earlier if you let them. So let's snag him now, although he's listed at 96. We could probably do it, but here's the thing. Do we even see anything worth blind picking in this range? Not really. That maybe, but no, he's real. So no, there's really nothing worth blind picking in this range. Unless this guy turns out to be, doesn't look like it, I don't know. Yeah, no report at all on this dude. Yeah, there doesn't look to be anything really worth blind picking. The next one, maybe this guy will be worth blind picking. But also looking maybe injury prone. 
But there are low top nines in here, so even the lows, not looking like they're going to be any sort of guaranteed elite <laughs> at all. So I might just choose a serviceable dude. All these lefties. Okay, let's let's grab the value now. I don't want to take a chance on that. I'm just gonna grab that now. There's really nothing. Yeah, he's 48 overall too. So really, that's that's honestly a trade piece to shove in somewhere. Okay. Um, I could honestly just blind pick this guy. He might turn out to be something. This the high. I'm thinking that's gonna be like. I don't know actually. I'm honestly considering grabbing it just because it could be like high AHL. Like that's the only thing I'm afraid of as it being high AHL. Well, we do have a throwaway pick. The rest of the guys I think are going to be like low. I mean, if he's high top nine, that'd be great. If he's high bottom six, that could even be serviceable. But if he turns out to be something weird and cool, I just don't want him to be like a high AHL, which I don't think will happen this early. And this guy, yeah, this guy can only be high bottom six or high top six. So it's looking like the guy's going to be high bottom six. That's kind of what it's looking like for him. But that's honestly sort of the best we got. There's really no blind pick opportunities for a steal. Not that I'm seeing. And around here, there has been no low elites in this draft. There's low top sixes. There's a starting goaltender. But yeah, no low elites. So we don't have the... There's not going to be too much here. But plenty of low top sixes. But those were earlier. So maybe Haravik's going to be a low top six, but I can't remember. That's a real dude. This is likely going to be a high bottom six. But physical playing grit. Maybe we'll want someone like that on the fourth line. It's tough to say. I don't think he'll be a high. He's not going to be a high top nine or anything like that. I should just, yeah. Should maybe look elsewhere. If the, some of these freaking dudes were like righties, some of these defensemen, I would goddamn grab them, but all of them are lefties here. Oh, wait, there's one. He's a top six guy. <clears throat> of course he's injury prone. Everyone's injury prone in this draft. Damn, kids. Okay, well, there's this guy. <clears throat> Guaranteed low top six. That's probably their best bet here. Injury prone. Cool. Why is everyone injury prone? I probably won't use them, and I'll probably use them for value, but that's still annoying. Because what if he actually develops? <laughs> well, if he develops, I can use him as depth in the way very near future. Whatever. This is probably the best amount of value I'll grab. So let's just go for value, I guess. Yeah, every, I think everyone else is going to be low top nine, in fact. Yeah, there he is. High, high bottom six. Was that, that was the guy, right? Doesn't, the name doesn't seem familiar, but I think that was him. Yeah. That was definitely him. Yeah, so he was a high bottom six at 55 overall. Might not have been bad, but... All right, so we got a next pick here at the 94th. Let me just see where that goalie was ranked again. I think I thought we can get him with the next pick, but I don't want to go crazy here. 117th. So 94, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 100, 101, 102, Yeah, okay, we can grab him with the next pick. But I might want to play it super, super safe and grab them now if I don't see any great options. There's a goaltender here who was, uh, oh no, he's real. So I don't think he'll be a starter potential or anything. That guy's real because he doesn't have a flag. Yeah, guys who don't have flags are real. I know nothing about this guy. So I'm honestly kind of just tempted to grab him because I don't have any info on him. 
This guy we know is low, so it could be low top four, which is pretty solid. But let's grab a true blind pick and hope for me and Elite out of nowhere. No. <laughs> Rip. So definitely anyone else would have been better than him. He turned out to be a fringe starter. Yeah, right. He was a low top nine, as I thought he might be. Yeah, that guy was a low top six. So that wouldn't even even really been as good. Those are basically like seventh D anyways. So a bit of a throwaway pick right there, but we ain't gonna win them all. So now we're gonna grab the tendy. Yep, we're grabbing uh, Nelson Aginler right now with all weaknesses, but whatever. He's a gem. And it's value. So grab him. We need we need an elite goalie in the system. Oof, 48 overall. Yep. Figured he'd be pretty low. Was hoping for over 50, though. All right. Next pick. I think we still got some time before we'd have to uh, select the next dude. I think we could do it in the next round. We're on the 125 right now. And uh, he's a 164. Yeah, we can grab him with our next pick. No matter what it is. All right, so what do we want here? This is, it's going to get, I don't know anything about him, so just taking a goalie right here you know nothing about is always a good call. Trent Miner, it honestly sounds like a real name though. Oh, guaranteed starter potential, that might be what to grab right there, honestly. Yeah, I might get lucky with another elite, but a guaranteed starter potential. At least some trade value. Another guaranteed starter potential. Let's see about this guy. He at least has got some uh, ooh, good compete level, good maturity. D minus E and C minus as opposed to D minus, D minus, C minus. This guy's slightly better overall. But that guy had better. He's outspoken. I wonder if that causes problems in the locker room. Not that he will even get there. But this guy also has concerns about if he can handle a professional environment. So honestly, we should pro even though the other guy's higher overall, this guy does seem like the better pick. Yeah, I say we grab this guy for at least some value. Ruslan Vorbioff. The name sounds familiar. Have I had him before? Might have. All right, next pick, the 138, hold on. That guy was going at like 150 something, right? What do we got? How long can we hold off? Can we get that other starter in there? Maybe. We also, we have the 149. I think that'll grab him, that other fifth, the 149. Let me just double check that while we're gonna be picking this. But I'm pretty sure that's the case. The 149 should get us that guy. If it's too close, I won't, I won't risk it. But, oh yeah, that's per, oh yeah. I thought he's in the 150s. Yeah, perfect. We'll grab him with the 149. Let's grab something else here. Is that other starter still there? Yeah, let's just grab two two goalies for the trade value alone, essentially. That's a good call. Or since I already grabbed that one starter, I could take a chance on this guy and hope that he's elite. Or go for the guaranteed value, which I would be tempted to grab this guy, hope for an elite. But honestly, going for since he's on an, an actual like a CHL team, I actually think he's real, even though he doesn't have a picture. Esteban Granado, like that's just not a name that should exist. So that seems fake. And he's guaranteed starter potential. I'll see what Miner turns out to be, but I don't think he'll be anything better than starter. If he is, then I'll eat it. But I'm going to try to play it safe. We need trade value on this team. We need guys to shift around. So we're going to do that. And let's sim up here and see where uh, Miner goes. And if he's an elite, that'll suck. But I don't think so. That name just seems not EA enough that actually seems like a name that could exist yeah he's a fucking backup i knew it i knew it yeah that, that's a real dude for sure <laughs> there we go i'm glad glad i didn't risk that all right so here we are get up to our pick here the 149th another backup goalie one another starty one volshenko but we got two starters already so that'll be nice we got our goaltender prospect pool locked in and uh starting to kick off and one more for the road, a low elite grinder who has no strengths, all weaknesses. 
But hey, you never know what he turns out to be. Another Quinton. Quinton Mathers. Should be Marshall. All right. And we have a couple more picks here in this draft. Uh, actually, maybe just one more. Yeah, I think just one more. This is our last pick. Perfect. Yeah, you don't want, you don't even want many picks in the in the late rounds in this uh, first draft because they're all trash. These are all pretty much going to be AHL guys, unless you could find someone who's really Curl Malkin. That sounds like a fake name. So this guy is the guy you you want to grab, but he has uh, medium potential, so less likely. I want to try to find someone with low here, but I don't think there's anyone with low. There's one, but he's a low top seven. Oh. There's this guy, low top four. No strengths and weak skating. Honestly, that's probably the best bet. Or a guaranteed fringe starter, but we have two stars and elite in this draft. Let's sort by potentials here. That'll make it easier so I don't scroll for 10 days. Or there's this guy who's a low maybe something. Can lack the drive to win. You don't want that. Or this guy who could go up to an elite or franchise. Or also could drop down to a fringe starter or backup. All right. Well, you know what? We've played it safe a few times. A, a low top four isn't the greatest. Let's go for a Hail Mary. Hail Mary and Jocelyn. Oh, damn it. I saw the long name. I was hoping for franchise, but it's fringe starter. Okay. It's not horrible. That's still honestly as much or maybe more value as a low top four. So value wise, we're still kind of in a good, good situation. So that's it. And I highly doubt we're going to, there's not going to be any more elites or anything in that seventh round. There pretty much never is. They're all AHL. And yep. Nothing there at the end. So there we go. Start off the draft. We got two Quintons in one draft, which is pretty rare. I don't think that'll ever happen. Our first two rounds were outstanding. We got an elite guy. And then Kulikov was another low elite. We got three low elites, one medium elite, and a medium top six in our, with our first five picks. And even after that, we were racking things up. A couple blind picks here and there to keep ourselves honest. But overall, I'd say that's a very good draft from us. That, that starts us off really strongly in this uh, rebuild. We got ourselves a lot more trade value than we have. All right, so we got one guy coming off contract. How good is he? Oh yeah, that's our best, no. <laughs> that's honestly our best scout. He's not going anywhere. Get on, get back here. All right, if I need, yeah, I'll, I'll take a look at the scouts and stuff uh, before the next episode and see if I need to uh, fire some more and pick up some more because I'd want to get everyone to like towards bees and stuff. All right. Some guys becoming a restricted free agents. I already got my phone with me. Don't have to run over and get that. So we could do do some quick maps here if we need to. All right. Where are we at? Doe. Okay, so we're all... I think we sign him immediately. Yeah, I can't tell what his role is yet, but I'd say we sign him immediately. Even if we don't play him in the NHL. Even if he spends a year in juniors, which he might end up doing. If he's not if he's not listed to be uh, in NHL, I honestly might play him juniors. Because he's going to be in a really shitty situation. If he uh, plays in our NHL. Pyarvi doesn't want to come back. Boo friggity who. Mm. Wallenine. Not the greatest, but I kind of want to hold on to some of these dudes who are at least decent for the AHL. And I can get him on a nice two-way deal. Lindbergh doesn't want to come back. Klimchuk. You're really poorly built. Gibbons. We'll probably need this guy, Falk. Yeah. Seems like someone will need. Get him on a two-way as well, so. Yeah, we're going to let go of a lot of these guys, though. So let go of you. We are going to need some guys to play here and there, but... This guy, he's a righty. Oh, this guy actually helped carry that AHL, so I want to hold on to him. 
Yeah, he'll be solid. Uh, Josh Norris needs his, uh, it's an entry level, right? Oh, no, it's not. Um, oh, it looks like, wow. He wants a bridge because it's saying that he's going to grow pretty quick. Okay. Let's give him a bridge then. All right, Paul. Nick Paul. You're okay, Bill. I don't think you'll go anywhere, but I, I can have you hang around. You're good enough to be, make my AHL team better. So that's kind of what my logic is there. England, low top 60, 73 at 23. You know what? You do have good defensive stats. I might want to hold on to you. Golubev can go. Yeah, I'll hold on to England. Just, yeah, a year's fine. It's a balancing act. You don't want to drop, and AHL guys can just get the hell out. Unless they're like mid 70s, they can get out. 70, hold on. I know nothing about you. But you're 70 overall, you might be needed to play. And you got 70 potential, which isn't amazing, but. Uh, Wick Strand is nothing. Neither is this guy. I'll just release him. Don't need him. Gotta be careful not to fall below, too far below the 40 for uh, roster slots. So we still got more to do. Let's check out the goalie situations here. Unders Nilsson. We have cash to spend on him, so we can spend it. Let, he's actually growing well, so I'm going to sign him for sure. Get him. Might as well get back Nilsson. We're hoping that Craig, because we might have to go with Condon and Nilsson as our goalies this year. Because if we're hoping Craig Anderson will bounce back up from that morale issue he's having, and we could ship, ship him off. So, yeah, that's probably what we're going to try to go for here. Nilsson. Wow, he actually wants a two-way deal? That's okay. That's very weird, but I'll take it. And everyone else we're going to leave off contract. All right, I think we do still have some UFAs we need to sign. Pi Arvey didn't want to come back. Neither does Lindbergh. But these are guys who I could actually use to play in somewhere. So we want to hold on to some of these guys. Klimchuk, I'm still deciding on him. Maybe just to carry some of my AHL. So yeah, we'll get him just to do that on a one-year two-way deal. Just to carry the AHL a bit. None of these guys want to come back. You're hitting your prime. But where are you going to play, man? You're trash. You have trash defensive stats. You're, you're, you're just garbage. Lindbergh's at least a bit better in some areas. He doesn't want to come back. Makes more sense that he would want to uh, go somewhere else. Because he looks like slightly capable. Gibbons as well, though. You're pretty... You know what? I don't want you, though. I want to get some more grit. Just get a bunch of fucking grit on my team. All right, Pi Arvin. We need to spend a bit of money, though. So... We'll make it worth your while to come back here. An undeserved contract for you. Lindbergh. Honestly, might need you to play third line. So I, can, I could try to give him an undeserved contract as well. What the fuck? You know what? Fine. You could leave, actually. But he's demoralized. That's why it's affecting that. I don't want you to. I want you to an actual contract here. There you go. Come back. Spend a bit of money here and there, and then we'll spend more in a normal free agency. So what we have right now. <laughs> We might have a lot of guys actually breaking into our NHL this year. So if we just did a count, I'm not even going to worry about who they are yet. One, two, three, four. Like, there's 12 right there, but Klimchuk should be there. So, yeah, we'll probably need to sign a couple pieces here in free agency to not only spend money just to fill out the roster, but we're still kind of in tank mode. I want our own pick to have a, a high top five result. We need another one, maybe two of those top picks at least. So we are going to continue to tank. There's no uh, no tanking rules in this uh, franchise, so we're going for it. We're going to. I mean, how can we not tank? There's no chance that we'd be able to sign several key pieces in free agency anyway as a team like this. Like, no, that ain't realistic as all. Yeah, you could with the amount of money you had, but even for like 15 mil, I don't think a player would want to come to a team like this. Like, yeah, that just, unless you just want money and don't want to win, but hockey players want to win. Anyway, let's advance a day here, see if we can get everyone back. We got our scout back. Lindbergh, yep. Everyone, uh, Nilsson actually rejected. Not too happy being on the team. They don't ask for a two-way. I'll give you a real one. Falk actually rejected. 
Okay, but I do want Falk back. If only for my AHL or to be depth. Because we did get rid of Golubev. Not happy with how the team ended up in the standings. Shut up, Justin Falk. You're not good enough to play anywhere else. Get real. Get on this team. We'll give you a massively undeserved contract. Which we might bury in the AHL. But no promises. Huh. Thought there was more. Oh, it's, yeah, it's just uh, Nilsson. Alright, fine. We'll give you a real deal, too. We'll give you a two mil contract. Alright, so we'll have ourselves a lot closer to the cap floor now. After these signings, and they're all very affordable. We'll retain on Anderson when we move it. Oh, god damn. Hiccups. Every time when I'm recording. It never. I don't think I get hiccups at any other time of the day than when I'm recording. I blame EA because that's the thing to do. You gotta blame EA. All right, Nilsson accepted, Falk accepted. That should be everyone. Let me just do a quick double check. Make sure it's all taken care of, which I believe it is. We got 38 guys under contract. We'll sign a couple more in free agency. Get up to that magic 40. Yep, all good for skaters and all good for goaltenders. We are set. Set and solid. So let's go. Up the free agency. And before we take a peek at it, we got to turn off our drafts. Ugh, turn off the draft settings because we're not allowed to see. We're only allowed to work with our NHL scouts when it comes to free agency. So that's why it's good to have a whole good scouting team. So here we go. Let's see. Let's see what's available. Let's see all the stuff that we... Wow, I clicked way too many times. Let's see all the stuff that we're not allowed, not really going to be able to grab. Mitch Marner is still fucking RFA. They still can't sign him. Same with Braden Point. Goodness gracious. I just want to save him because the computer's just so bad at managing a team. No one else can grab these guys. He didn't play for an entire year. He played in Europe or something. Should I save Mitch Marner? I could maybe trade for his rights. I'm not going to give up picks, that's for damn sure. But I'll trade for his rights if I can. Using some of that value. Because the computer honestly doesn't uh, deserve him. <laughs> if they're doing this shit. We don't need a center in Braden Point. Pavelski hits free agency. Duchesne <laughs> hit free agency. But Panarin didn't. Did Wabrowski? No. What? How unrealistic. They kept all of them. Oh, bullshit, Snapple. Okay, they can keep Dezingle go. So they lost Duchesne to Dezingle. Oh, you want to get back Dezingle? <laughs> you want to see a galaxy? Maybe. Maybe we can. I think Dzingel's a guy you could optimally say, yeah, you can get back. He's only 83 overall. And he's right now in his prime. Honestly, I think a Dzingel would be a guy who we could probably snag back. And I kind of like Dzingel. But we'd have to ask ourselves, does he want to come back to this team? It'd be a good amount of money to spend, too. Five year contract, and like five mil. It, it'll be a more expensive contract, but we won't really be hitting cap hell for the next, in the next five years. I don't foresee that. Even when we get guys coming off their first entry levels, we shouldn't be spending a whole horrific amount. And like, even, even then, that's only from this first year of drafting. That's three years, then you got to keep moving it back a year with that whole three-year entry level thing. And a lot of prospects we grab, we don't even sign them for the first couple years. So, yeah, that'll be a great, I think that's something that we could look for. Grabbed his angle. And then we'll have to see some of our other needs. But yeah, we can get back to Zingle. I ain't grabbing Duchesne back. He's actually cursed, so he'll ruin the rebuild. But yeah, I think to Zingle, I think that makes a bit of sense. I know he's entering his prime, and I know he's a very capable player. He could be third line anywhere else, but. You know, maybe shorter than the five years. Maybe, yeah, maybe we go shorter than five years and spend a little more on him. Maybe like only a two-year deal because he is in his prime. You got to take that in consideration. Like no many, not many players are going to want to come here entering their prime. So that's still, you got to think of that when it comes to free agency. And we do kind of still want to tank at the same time. 
But if we could have a couple players that could enable other players like Kachuk, but they do play the same position. So how much enabling would be going on right there? Not a whole lot. I mean, we got Colin White. I'll probably put Colin White together with uh, Kachuk. I mean, yeah, could just grab him and then have at least one line doing good. Probably play him on the second line and then have a really trash first line. So at least we could have one decent line putting in work. Yeah. That value is still low for Craig Anderson. We gotta. It, I think that we just need to wait for after free agency. The morale should reset. The morale should reset after that. That's that's at least what it should happen. <laughs> and then we then we'll be able to trade him. Okay, so free agency is ahead of us. Let me know what we should do, who we should pursue, if we should just get some trash guys and fill up, or if we should try to get Zingle back for a couple years for a lot of money and try to have at least like one sort of competitive line with White, Kachuk, and Zingle. And so we can kind of get Kachuk and Colin White on the right foot, the, or a better foot for growing, because we do, yeah, we need growth. All right, so that's pretty much it. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Remember to leave that like, and I'll see you in the next one. If watching my videos just isn't enough sin for you, be sure to go over there on Twitter and shoot me a follow, and you could even join our Discord server as well to talk with some of the other sinners out there. The links to both are in the description.